Nice to see your smiling faces. A few announcements uh, for this week. Up here. Uh, first of all, we have a welcome to uh, the Varna family and the bouncing baby boy. Uh, so thank the Lord for that. And, uh, they're not here yet. <laughs> it's a brand new baby. So. Praise the Lord. And, oh yeah, and there's a big baby shower uh, upcoming, and uh, all the ladies are invited to that on May 14th. Come on over for that. All right, I think that's all the announcements we have this morning. This morning has it. All right, well, let's stand and worship the Lord this morning in song. <coughs> Thank you. 
from the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, talking about the law and the offerings in the Old Testament. It says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then, would they, would they not have ceased to be offered? For worshippers, once purified, would have had no conscience of sins. But in, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Sacrifice and offering. Um, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, then, lo, then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. And every priest stands ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting until his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Amen. Amen. Book of Hebrews, the author is making a, a comparison of Jesus with everything. And he compares Jesus to, he's talking to the Jewish people, and uh, he makes a comparison uh, of Jesus and, uh, you know, and the offerings and the, and the sacrifices. And he said those things were, were only just a picture of the real thing. <laughs> Jesus is the real thing. Jesus was what everything was looking forward to. And when Jesus came, he didn't just cover over sins like those sacrifices in the Old Testament. He totally took them away. And that's why there's no offering today. That's why the Jews don't, you know, they don't even do it today. And they don't even know why, because they, they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But the fact of the matter is, is that Jesus was the Messiah. And our sins are taken away. The Bible says, as far as the East is from the West, and he will remember them no more. Amen? Amen. That's what we're celebrating this morning. Let's continue to worship the Lord in song. <clears throat> Get everyone to stand and sing. Or rather, to me, my heart.
an animal, but you'd bring a sheep or a young bull to the gate of the tabernacle, and there you might slit its throat, and you would collect the blood, and of course that's a messy business because you could be sprayed with blood as it gushes out of that animal. You skin the animal, then you take it apart, you clean the guts, you take the intestines and you dispose certain parts of it and you keep other parts of it and then you assemble all the pieces on the altar the way the priest would subscribe. And after all that, you are somehow impressed with this animal that had to die so that you could go on living, so that God wouldn't judge you. And now, now, the Word of God says, a body you, Father, have prepared for me. And that body is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're celebrating during communion. When we take the bread and partake of it, we are saying, this represents the body that God has prepared for me, for my atonement, for the forgiveness of my sin. And then when you take the cup, you think that blood that was spilled on the ground and was collected by the priest and was sprinkled on the altar and it was very specific. You had to put blood on the horns of the altar and make sure that everything was done right. Now, the body of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. That's what we're doing when we partake. We are remembering 
what Jesus Christ did for us. So this morning, as we come and partake of the bread and the cup, you're remembering the Lord Jesus. You are worshiping, you are honoring him for what he has done for you and for me. Let's bow our heads and we'll give thanks for the bread and for the cup. Heavenly Father, none of us, not one of us, is worthy to come into your presence on our own merit. But we come into your presence because you say, come boldly because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of the sacrifice that he has made for us. And so we are in your presence, very privileged because of this grace that you've bestowed to us, because of what Jesus has done for us. And we are not consumed, we are not destroyed. We stand on holy ground and we have been made holy through the shed blood of Christ. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we thank you for this cup that we're about to partake of. We thank you for the bread that represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we partake meaningfully. And may you be glorified in these acts of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll ask those of you who know the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptized, and of course are following him, to partake. You don't have to be, quote, an official member of the church, but if you're a member of the body of Christ and you have expressed that in baptism, we would invite you to join us at the Lord's table. Please come and help yourself to a little cup and a piece of bread. Go back to your seat and we will partake together when all have helped themselves. All right?